Some of the prep work we were doing on this, I, I've been hearing this statement called 60 gigahertz democ democratizes. I really struggle with that word, <laughs> uh, the internet. Uh, but, uh, Darren, can you walk me through that a little bit? I think it's a seven syllable word, Chris. <laughs> I, I think six was your limit. So I, I apologize for that. That's uh, my bad. Um, seven syllable word, democratization of the internet. Um, you know, that use, that term has been used quite a bit in the past. It was popular many years ago, mostly to talk about applications and the internet's access to resources, knowledge, knowledge, right? You know, a, a, a kid living in, in, in Africa, all of a sudden he has access to a world of knowledge that he didn't have access, his gener generation before him did not have access to. That's the democratization of the internet. But in this, in this sense, we can also use that term because it also contributes. 60 gigahertz contributes to a gap, a gap, not in knowledge, but a gap in access to broadband resources that has been limited uh, to, to only a, a few people and a few companies. So if, um, until recently, uh, the only companies that could deliver gigabit or multi-gigabit, and actually one gig is where they kind of capped it, are the, you know, the cable MSOs and uh, the big cable MSOs, not the small ones, right? The big ones, mm -hmm. the ones and the companies that could, afford, that could afford billions of dollars, billions of US dollars to deploy fiber optic networks. And then at the end of the day, those fiber networks did not go to every home like they intended. They still had to drop them onto an edge qualm or, or something else at the edge most of the time to get to the actual end point. So they spent billions of dollars and still didn't quite get there. But, but it's been limited to those types of companies, right? And everybody else, all the rest of us, have been left out of that, that multi-gigabit world. So what this is doing, the democratization aspect of this is that now anybody, and one of the, one of the questions which we will get to, uh, one of the questions somebody asks is, I'm, says I'm new to this technology, how do I get access to this spectrum? Hold on, we're gonna keep talking about that because that's what we're talking about right now. 60 gigahertz is available to anybody who wants to use this frequency, who wants to use these products that Cambium is delivering to deliver multi-gigabit broadband networks to their subscribers. So now we have, we have access to knowledge, we have access to the bandwidth that, that we need for, for the next decade. Right. Uh, uh, Alan, give us, uh, give us the, the nerd's point of view here. Let's get a little bit technical. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, if you look at the, uh, I think, look at the industry. As a wireless industry in the past, when people talk about high capacity, as, as Darren said, you know, people really think about those cable MSOs uh, or fiber companies. And even when we start like Cambium, uh, you know, when we start the, the, the initial wireless product, we really do those like start with five meg, 10 meg, eventually go to 20, 30, but we're still ready to compete with DSL uh, solution rather than fiber cable because we're not ready to talk about gigabit throughput. And the 60 gigahertz really enable us to provide a solution for those specifically wireless internet service providers. Now they have a new equipment or solution. They can really uh, compete directly with cable or fiber companies. Not only that, historically because of the, because of the DSL, you know, or the capacity, we're not able to use wireless technology to do we already compete with DSL. The market is limited in the uh, rural area or suburban area. We're not ready to move to the urban market. And uh, urban market is, is very dominant by the cable guys. And you think about this now with 60 gigahertz, the consumer has a second choice. Now we can, they, they will be able to choose between a wireless service provider versus a cable company. So this really gives the bad pass, you know, bring this new technology, disrupt the, the, the existing way the industry set, set up to really bring the, the, new, the new choice for the operators, for the um, wireless, wireless internet service operators and also the customers to see a second choice. Uh, more than that, the 60 gig solution, uh, even compared to fiber or cable solution, we deliver, we do the symmetrical uh, throughput, uplink and downlink. If you look at the cable company, majority of them, they do a pretty high speed for downlink, but uplink is limited. Uh, they have a relatively low throughput for uplink. And with the you know, current pandemic, we, we see more and more video stuff ongoing. We do the video conference calls and kids do the online, uh, online uh, courses 
you know, online school. So a lot of video things are ongoing. They, they need, you need equal capacity for your uplink. And this really bring advantage even over fiber or uh, cable solution. So Chris, what are you uh, seeing from uh, the industry? Well, uh, what's happening to democratize um, the internet here when we're talking about 60 gig is the, the, key, the key message here is 60 gigahertz is unlicensed spectrum and therefore you don't pay for the license. So in that respect, it is free. Um, all you have to do is buy the equipment and install it properly um, is really why you can, you can call this democratizing the internet in that respect. But um, what I wanted to do is just kind of talk about where I see 60 gig uh, fitting in. So um, uh, all of us have heard of uh, Wi-Fi that gets used in like a campus environment. Um, these uh, Wi-Fi devices, you know, access points, gateways, that kind of thing, uh, use what's um, referred to as mid-band, mid-band frequencies. And this is 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and, and soon 6 gig. This is all mid-band. And what you do uh, with mid-band uh, Wi-Fi is you connect hundreds or thousands of devices using, using these access points. Uh, historically, in order to get these um, access points, Wi-Fi access points to connect to one another is you, uh, you'd use ethernet, um, or if you wanted to connect one building to another, you might use mid-band again. But the, the idea uh, is if you're connecting devices using mid-band and then connecting those access points using mid-band, you have a choke point. A choke point is uh, there because uh, you know mid-band doesn't have all that much capacity. So here's where 60 gig uh, gigahertz um, fits in. It's it's higher frequency, so it has higher bandwidth. And because it's unlicensed, you don't have to call uh, like a mobile operator, like just like Verizon who sells millimeter wave, um, uh, you, or you don't have to install fiber to connect one building to another or to bring a broadband service to a building and um, so 60 gigahertz is, uh, is, 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 as I said earlier, unique because it connects uh, at very high bandwidth and um, you know, you don't have to pay for the spectrum. So uh, I, see, I see this as uh, democratizing, you know, the, the link or multiple links uh, in, in, a, you know, in the ranges that we were talking about with Alan and Darren earlier. So um, that's how I see it democratizing uh, the, the internet. Um, we have a few questions that we're going to jump in here really quick. Um, this is from Jeff. Is this like private LTE or public spectrum? Uh, and is besides this event and this recording, is there other documentation that can be shared surrounding 60 gigahertz? Don't all speak up. So, so uh, we, I'd, I'd be very happy to address that if, if you'd like. Um, so, uh, uh, what we're talking about when we say 60 gigahertz is spectrum, you can kind of run whatever you want over it. Um, it, it, it could be LTE, 5G, proprietary, Wi-Fi, it, all, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're just talking about spectrum. And the, the idea behind the spectrum is it's, it's, it's a, a unique asset uh, to use and it's unlicensed. Sorry, Darren, I didn't mean to step on you there. Go ahead. No, no I, was, I, was, I was just, just going to comment there on the, really the second, heck, second half of that question about where do they access more, more, tech, more information about it. And we'll cover that in a minute, but let's just give you the, the quick answer right now. We'll give you some more details on that. Uh, Cambium has information on our product. We have information about technology in general. We have information about other RF and wireless technologies, and it's all available to our partners. We'll come back to that. Chris, did you have more that you wanted to add to that answer? Uh, well, um, if because if not, I've got other questions. I just no, want to no, I think I think of an answer. I answered basically. You know, there's spectrum, and then there's technology that runs over spectrum. The, the, in most licensing uh, locations, most geographies and countries, you can kind of uh, run the technology you want over the spectrum, and it varies from country to country. But you know, here we are uh, talking primarily to a North American audience and and i think you can say you can run whatever you want over uh the fcc license unlicensed spectrum awesome um darren you mentioned you've got you've got a product that goes 250 kilometers what is that product <laughs> you know what? i'm gonna have to have alan i i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta uh, uh plead ignorance here on that alan why don't you go ahead and take that he's the he's our sure. resident expert on that <laughs> the long range stuff i can't see that so far. 
we have a link, we have a PTP 670 product line using the sub six gigahertz. And we have one link deployed, not actually that one is a test link uh, in Colorado, uh, basically from the peak of the mountain, shoot for a basin on the other side. That link is basically, I think that one is 200, uh, the link was 230 or 20. We have a YouTube link. Go to our KMIM YouTube. We have a demo specific for that link. And that's the product we're using. 